Hey everybody, Nick Dingle here again. Welcome back to the VB.NET 2013 tutorials. Today we're going to cover lists in some great detail. We're going to have a look at what a list is, why you would use a list, and some of the functionality that comes along with a list. Now the one thing to remember when you're using lists is they're very, very similar to arrays, okay? And that is, they're similar in the sense that we can have lots and lots of different variables of the same type with, a ver with the same name. Okay, the only difference between a list and an array is generally with an array, you know how many you want to use. With a list, you generally don't know how many you want to use. Now, there is actually a bigger difference in the background between an array and a list, but I won't go into how memory works just yet. That will come at a very later date at this point. So we're going to deal with lists. Now, as I said before, they're similar to arrays in the sense that they've got a name, They've got the same data type, okay? And to declare a list is just use list, and you notice how it says list of T. Now what this is, capital T is always short for type. And by that I mean a type would be an integer, or a string, or a boolean, or a single, or something similar to that fact. If I actually press the space bar now, it's gonna put a bracket in of for me. And since numbers insinuates an integer, I'm just gonna type integer like so so what I've done now is I've declared my list of integers called numbers all right and I would just use the the identifier or the name numbers to access modify and call on different functions all right so if, to start with if we just chuck in a few numbers like we did with the array we'll start with 10 100 and a thousand and then we're going to do some little different things and tricks to show you how similar and how different they can actually be now, in the arrays, what we did is we went numbers 0 equals 10. Now, we don't do that anymore. Okay, what we actually do is you will go numbers dot add and then the number 10. So, what I'm actually doing is adding in the value 10 to our list of numbers. Now, notice this. We get a little green squiggly and it tells me that I'm going to be using numbers before it's assigned a value. A null reference exception could result at runtime. And you know what? pressing play it does actually happen right here object reference not set to an instance of an object this is the same error that we received when we were working with classes All right? and the way that we resolve that problem is we use the new keyword in front of our list and that should be fine if I press play now it's just going to open and close which is perfect so let's jam the other two numbers in there Just like so and you can keep going so notice how because we're not using the index on the front we can just add as many numbers as we want there would be a hard limit but I'm pretty sure it would be a very large number so if I just quickly pop in a read line let's make sure this works press enter works perfectly now first thing is how do we know how many because we don't know really how many elements are inside our list how do we figure it out you use it by the number a property of numbers so let's just quickly type in numbers and put the magic dot in and we've got all I'm just going to go to common we've got all these different functions that we can look at all right and we're going to look at a fair few of them today and you can see there's even a capacity and we probably should have a look at that that'd be nice and interesting but what we're looking at we want to find out how many in our list at the moment we use count okay gets the number of elements actually contained Alright, so if I just write that to the screen, three, perfect, okay, that tells us how many elements are inside our list, if there was nothing inside our list, it would obviously give you a zero, if there's ten in your list, then it would give you ten, alright, now the question might be, how do we actually access each individual element of a list, well it's actually the same as an array, Okay, I'm just going to pretty this right up. I'm going to change it to a right line. Number of list elements. So I'm just putting in a little right line there just so I can keep track of how many numbers I've got. So how do we access the first element? It's the same thing as if we're working with arrays. So if, with arrays, we would have put the name of the array and then we specify the index. A zero based index so the first element would be the number would have the index of zero so if I press play 
the first element is 10. All right, and then we can get the last element. Now, you, let's just quickly copy and paste that line. I'm going to go the last element, and let's change that to 2, because remembering, this would be the zeroth index, zeroth element, first element, second element. So that's why I put 2 inside those brackets. So if I press play now, it gives me the first and the last element. I'm pretty sure you would have already figured that out before I press play. But anyway, what if we don't know how many numbers really are going to be inside our list? What if there are four elements inside it? Well, two isn't going to be the last element. And sometimes if the user takes control and adds in as many numbers as they want, we're not going to know how many elements are inside our list. So realistically, we need to take use or make use of this numbers.count. All right, but be careful. All right. We've got four elements, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And at this point, if I press play, we have four elements in our array. So keep that number in your mind, the number 4. So if I use numbers.count for my index, really it's going to produce the number 4. So if I press play, I get the index was out of range because... Go away, Windows. There we go. Because the number four doesn't exist in numbers. Okay, we've got zero, one, two, and three, and three is our last one. So what we need to do is go numbers count minus one, and that will always this here will always return us the very last element of our array. Well, I, sh I keep saying the word array list, and there we go. There's our last element now, okay? and that's that can change. Like if we add 500 elements to our list, that's Still going to return the very last element inside our list. All right, let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let instead of us jamming the numbers in for the user, let's let the user type in their number. And what I generally do as a first example with my students is we have a temporary integer, and I set it to minus one to start with. Bear with me for a moment. And what we do is you let the user pick a number, and you continually add it to the list until they type in the number zero. If they type in the number zero, you stop ad adding numbers and you do all your little right lines and stuff. So this is quite easy. So what we're going to do is while num does not equal zero, so we're going to let them type in positive and negative numbers, give them a nice polite little message. As always, please enter a number. We'll grab num equals read line. Okay. Now that's all well and good, I'm getting the number from the user, but I need to put it in our list of numbers. Okay, so you go numbers.add, and what do we want to add to the list? Well, we want to add the number they just typed in, num. Okay, so pressing play now, I should be able to continuously enter numbers until I type in zero, really. Enter a number, one, two, three, Okay, so really, I just typed in 11 numbers, it collected 11, the first one is 1, the last element was 0, and there we go. That's a nice little bit of code, it's pretty easy too. The only problem is, well, we didn't want, we didn't want to actually think that the last element was going to be 0. Really, we just want to stop when we get to 0, but we don't want to add it to the array. So we have to add a little if statement just here, if number does not equal 0. Then we add it to the list. So we're going to add any number to the list which is not zero. So let's give it a go. I'll only go to five this time. And there we go. One, two, three, four, five numbers. First element, last element. Zero has been completely ignored. Poor fella. All right, that's just a quick example. If you want to have a go at that code, just pause the video now. Give it a quick type. But... Well, you know what, before we even pause the video, I'm going to show you a couple of functions to do with our good old friend list. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to find the smallest number, and we're going to find the largest number, and then we're going to find the average. 
because we're dealing with numbers, we can do this quite easily. All right, and let me just get rid of number zero there. All right, so how do we find the smallest number inside a list? Really, back in the day, what we had to do is go through the list and compare every single number against each other until we figured out which one has the smallest value. But with visualbasic.net, we can actually type in the name of our list, dot M I N min. Same thing for the largest number, but it's dot max. And the same thing for average, but average. Okay, so if I hit play now, one, two, three, four, five, ten, eighty four. Let's go to zero. First element, sorry, smallest, largest, and the average. Okay, so there's just some different ways that you can use this. Really, really simple. Okay, so you've got to remember that a list is pretty much the same thing as an array, but we don't know how many elements we're going to have. We can have as many as we want realistically. Okay, well, to a limit, basically. So that probably wasn't the longest video that I've ever done for a tutorial, okay? But I think I've covered most of the elements of lists and a lot of the things that I said for arrays will actually transfer across, such as sorting numbers and reversing numbers and things like that, okay? But instead of array.sort, you would use numbers.sort, okay? And it's pretty straightforward. That'll just sort the numbers up for you. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to make an, an one more tutorial on the basics of how to use Visual Basic. Wow, that was a weird sentence. And we're going to learn how to write to text files and read from text files. Okay, or another way of saying it is sequential files. They're the same thing. And then we're going to move on to a new set of videos, a new playlist, which is taking you through developing a full-blown application using all of these techniques that we've just gone through. So until then, happy programming. Good luck, everybody. Have a go at your lists.